Welcome to Jazz Time. JazzTime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. We offer the lowest price anywhere online. If you would like to know the price, simply click on the link in the description below. If you enjoy our videos, we'd greatly appreciate it if you would buy a watch from JazzTime.com. Today, I'm going to be comparing the Rolex Daytona Reference 116500LN White versus the Rolex Sea Dweller 43 Reference 126600. I'm going to talk to you guys about this bezel, the dial, the case, the bracelet, and the movement. Try it on, give you my thoughts. So let's dive right in. Let's talk about the case. Now the case on the Daytona is 40 millimeters. It's an Oyster monoblock middle case with a screw down case back, which is the same as the Sea Dweller on the right. But the Sea Dweller, if, if I hold them side by side, as you can see, the Sea Dweller is much uh, bigger. It's because it's 43 millimeters and you can see the size difference even though it's only 3 millimeters It's actually a 10% difference now <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys the case if you let's look at the lugs If I hold them side by side you can see that the Daytona has much skinnier lugs where the bracelet connects with the head of the watch Whereas the sea dweller has a much fatter one now It's even more prominent when I turn the watches to, on their side and show you with a side profile This is called the height now the height of the Daytona, I measured it earlier with my calibers, was 12 millimeters and the Sea Dweller was 15 millimeters. Now if you, by comparison, the Deep Sea, which is the biggest watch they make, is 17 millimeters and the Daytona is 12 millimeters. Now by comparison, a Datejust is approximately uh, 11 millimeters. So it's just a tiny bit smaller and probably because the Datejust has less complications, as in no chronograph. Okay, so that's something to think about when you're thinking about the height of the watch. Do you want a thick watch or do you want a thin watch? Do you want a big watch or a little watch? Depends, 40 versus 43 on the diameter or 12 versus 15 millimeters. That's up to you, okay? Um, now moving on to the, K, uh, to the bezel. Now the bezel on both of these is actually using a ceramic bezel they, they have a fancy name for it. They say it's a, uh, on the Sea Dweller, it's a unidirectional rotatable 60 minute graduated scratch resistant serochrome insert in ceramic. Numerals and graduations are coated in platinum. So that's a pretty cool thing. You would think that just, you know, they're just white, but Rolex really pays attention to all details. In fact, they do so much so that they put the ceramic bezel, it's not just ceramic like, um, you know, a non-precious metal. No, 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 this is Rolex. They put platinum into the bezel. So these hour markers or these uh, markers that you see my finger going over, they're actually platinum graduations coated in platinum, which by the way is a very, very rare metal. Okay. Now looking at the Daytona, <clears throat> you'll see, oh yeah, I, I might mention that the, uh, the Sea Dweller has a uh, unidirectional bezel. Whereas, what does that mean? You can turn the bezel like this, which is kind of cool. Like if you have nothing to do, you could like doink around with your watch. But on the Daytona, you uh, don't have that. It is a um, set. The, the, the bezel is black monoblock serochrome bezel in ceramic with engraved tachymetric scale. Okay, so basically I can't turn it. It is also very nice. Now I'm looking on their website. I'm not sure if it's, um, it has platinum baked into it. Um, I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below. But I didn't see that on their website, and I don't really have any way to tell, but verify that. So if you, you guys uh, know, then let me know. Okay, and you'll also notice here on the Sea Dweller that it has these ridges on the, on the bezel. I mean, the bezel just makes this thing, the Sea Dweller, look much bigger. Now let's move on to the dial. Now the dial on the, um, the Daytona comes in two colors if you were talking about steel, and that the first color is black and the second color is white. I have white here. Um, and the Sea Dweller only comes in a black color. Now, where I think uh, you might see a difference is in the legibility of this watch at night. So I'm gonna show you the, the Daytona. That's what it would look at like at night, whereas the Sea Dweller, it looks, it, uh, you see how luminous those hour markers are? Well, partly because it's supposed to be a dive watch and you should be high luminous in low light situations, okay? Um, now the, the bezel 
uh, or sorry, the, the dial on the Daytona, as you see, is also a lot busier. You see these three subdials? I'm not going to show you how to use it here, but if you want, you can click through some of our YouTube videos to see how to use those subdials. I'll just suffice it to say it's a lot busier and it does the function of calculating time. Of course, this being a watch and this being a Cosmograph Daytona, it does that. Now, um, elapsed time, I should say. For the seed roller, on the other hand, it just uh, you set the bezel with a triangle pointing at this minute marker, and you, you can see how much elapsed time has gone by in case you're diving underwater or just simply waiting for a friend. So that's what it can be used for. And what I might also notice, uh, notate here is that they both have this cool red. The Sea Dweller has this uh, Sea Dweller in red, but the Daytona also has a Sea Dweller in red. A lot of people miss that. They don't re realize that. They think that the only thing written in red is the Sea Dweller because of the famous double red Sea Dweller. Well, guess what? The Daytona also has it. In fact, it's written right there in red. I think it's a really nice touch. I think Rolex did a good job to put it there. Now, let's talk about the bracelet. Okay, now they both only come on the Oyster bracelet. The, the difference, though, is that the Daytona has a... Uh, polish center link where my thumb is going and the the um, the sea dollar does not where my th it's all brushed finish okay now I'm going to show you guys the buckle they both have an oyster folding safety clasp but you can see the buckle on the sea dollar is much longer now I want to show you something else on the sea dollar that's kind of funky is that they have this diver extension now how many of us are gonna uh, actually go diving Probably none of us with this expensive watch. That's what dive computers are for, but it's really cool that it at least could do this. Now this is a brand new watch, so I don't really want to take it apart, and we have done other videos that do take it apart, but suffice it to say, you can extend this right where you see my hand, and uh, it can fit over your wetsuit. Let's say you're doing some cold diving. and But it looked kind of funky for normal use. You see it kind of comes out like that. A lot of people just remove it. Okay, anyways, it's, it uses, still uses this glide lock system, you know, which allows it, you see that? Okay. So anyhow, that's the system. But for the Daytona, you really only have a five millimeter comfort extension. I'm gonna open that for you right now, uh, which is also great. You know, I mean, most of us only wear our watch in one size, which is the size that fits. Okay, so that's, there it is right there. Okay, now, um, let's talk about the movement. You know, just briefly, the you don't get to see the movement in the back of this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But the Daytona is using a 413 movement at plus minus two seconds a day. Um, it's a tried and tested movement. The, um, the Sea Dweller is also using a very tried and two test, tested movement, but it's an upgraded movement. Uh, it's a 3235, which has replaced the 3135, which has been in production for many, many years, like 30 years. Okay, so basically they both use really good movements. Now, just to give you my thoughts, I think both of them are really good. The Daytona is, uh, is good, it's sleeker. You know, it, it is a lot more money though, you know, uh, I like I like the watch, of course. It's actually one of the most desirable watches, but I could also see the case for the Sea Dweller. I mean, you know, it's cool, it's got this red. It, if you don't like the Submariner because it's too small, this would be a, a good fit because it's, you know, a little size bigger. So, I don't know, they're both good. If you like it, you, you think you want to buy it, go to jazztime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazztime, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.